As a visual effects artist or compositor, you might need to add, remove, or match noise or grain between the footage and the elements that you are compositing. Now, before we go and do that, let me first introduce you to what is the digital noise and what is the film grain and what is the difference between those two, as well as how are they affecting your workflow as a compositor. Back in the days, all movies were filmed on analog camera by using a film stock which had a microscopical light-sensitive crystals in them. When film stock was used and processed, these crystals created a random texture on film, which we call film grain. Today everything is digital and we rarely use film stock anymore, so there's no place for grain to form. However, we have an alternative which is known as digital noise. This time it is produced by a digital camera sensor due to heat, temperature, electronics and illumination. So grain and noise are naturally occurring side effect artifacts that are captured on footage. They can visually be distinguished and there is a reason for that. The microscopical crystals that are inside the film stock are manufactured and designed in a specific way in order to maintain a desired resolution, contrast and sensitivity of the film stock. Therefore, film grain has a pattern. It is more organized and balanced and sharp and it doesn't have any colored pixel noise. While digital noise is more random noise of heat and temperature which is chaotic and fuzzy and contains uh, color pixels in them and bending therefore it is more unpredictable that's why normally it is expressed that we add grain and we reduce noise because grain is more acceptable however i would not be surprised if a new technology will bring some new imperfection which will either join or replace them both let me visually show you how it looks like i recreated grain on the left side and noise on the right side let me now play the video and zoom in and by comparing them both, you can see how different they are. You can see how organized, clean and balanced grain is. Also, grain has got no color in it, as opposed to noise. Noise is more fuzzy. It is less sharp and all over the place. Depending on light conditions and heat and different electronics, noise is more random and chaotic than grain. Also, as you can see, it has got additional pixels that has got color in it. You can find pixels of red, blue and green colors. Anyway, by knowing what the footage was filmed with and by being able to distinguish noise from grain, we know the specific characteristics that we need to match. However, I must say that most of the time, because of the digital age, we will deal with a various digital noise. Unless footage was filmed on film stock and ended up on your computer by being digitized. Grain or noise can be very subtle or due to low light conditions and high ISO settings very strong. Either way, as a compositor, we have to pay attention to its presence. Because when we composite a new element into the scene, we have to maintain the overall look and we have to match the grain and noise and any other imperfection accordingly. Let's say you received a footage where you have to composite a 2D still element. Now, still images, they don't have any noise or grain in them because they are static. So if you leave it as it is, it will stand out from the rest of the environment and will seem unnatural and subconsciously obvious for a human eye. By matching grain between our asset and the environment, we make it look more realistic and believable, as if it is really there. It is subtle but very crucial detail. CGI elements also don't have any grain in them, so if you receive any 3D asset like animated character, you will have to match it. Now, softwares has got a built-in effect that allow either to add or match grain. Let me show you how it is done. If we zoom in close on the shot, we will see the grain noise moving around. I filmed it with a lot of grain on purpose for a visual obvious presentation. Normally it would be a lot subtle and not that obvious. Let's say there would be no grain at all. In such case, it would seem as if we paused the video and are looking at the still image. So it is good that it is there, as it creates a feeling of motion and time, even though nothing is really moving in the shot. It makes it look alive. That is another point why we need grain in film. Let's bring in our still image. If you look at it next to our footage, you will obviously notice the absence of grain motion on it. If we leave it as it is, it will stand out from the rest of the shot and grab all the attention, only to reveal the whole shot being fake. To make it look real, we have to create and match the grain with a background image. To do that, we can apply an effect onto our newly introduced element, which is called Add Grain. And as default, it previews the applied grain effect through a box, which you can drag around to reveal grain at your desired region. You can adjust this preview region through settings by changing its position, width and height. You can hide the box as well as change its color. However, it is better to see grain being applied to a whole element instead. And to do that, under the viewing mode, choose final output and grain will take over the whole element. It looks good, but still requires some tweaking for it to match the grain of our background. Compare our created grain effect and adjust settings under the tweaking options until it matches the grain of our background. By the looks of it, our added grain is too soft, so let's make it sharper by lowering softness down a bit. Then let's adjust the size. Now, the intensity option affects the strength of the overall effect, while aspect ratio option is one by one by default, and it should stay that way unless you work with footage filmed using an anamorphic lens. So play around with these settings until you are satisfied with the results. 
Now we made some overall tweaks, which might seem enough, but there's more. As we know from before, digitally created noise has got color pixels in it. We have to match them as well. If it would be film grain instead, which has got no color in it, we would simply check monochromatic box under the color section, and grain effect would get rid of any color in it. But in our case, because of the digital noise, we have to tweak some color settings. Under the color section, we can adjust saturation of the color noise. In our case, we can make it less appealing by lowering it down. Optionally, you can push color of the noise towards any tint if one specific color has to be more dominant. Additionally, you can tweak separate settings for each color channel. So, for instance, you can isolate intensity only for red or blue, as well as change size only for green or red. Study the background noise and try to adjust these settings accordingly if need be. You can learn more about color channels and how they work at the beginning of my video called Everything You Need to Know About Alpha Channel. Let's go further. Under the application settings, you have more controls. You can make so that grain would be more applied to either highlights, midtones, or shadows, either by using the blending modes or by manually adjusting each setting for the tone. In our case, we see that grain is more present in shadows and midtones rather than highlights, so let's adjust it accordingly. If you need even more control, you can adjust tones for each color channel separately under the channel balance settings. Now our newly introduced element is integrated better with the background footage and is more believable than before. As an alternative to add grain, you can apply an effect called match grain. Under the noise source layer drop-down menu, select the layer with our footage as a reference for it to copy the grain from. Let's select our background footage. Also set the viewing mode to final output to see how fully the grain is being applied onto our image. Match grain automatically takes samples from our selected background, learns them, and then applies onto our element. If default samples are not creating an acceptable result for grain match, you can then manually choose the samples by yourself. To do that, first under the viewing mode drop-down menu, select noise samples. Then viewer will reveal our background footage, which we selected under the noise source layer before, as well as 8 boxes for noise sampling will appear automatically taking random samples for now. Now we have to take control over the samples. Under the Sample Selection drop-down menu, located inside the sampling settings, choose Manual. Then under the Noise Sample points, you can navigate each box manually, either by scrolling its X and Y axis, by dragging them from the center of the screen, or better, click on the aim sign and place the sample at the desired location. You can also change the color of the box, its size, number of boxes, and which frame to take the noise from on your footage. And when you select samples, select them from area with a clear noise pattern on a solid background. Avoid any movement and strong changes in brightness and colors. Also for better results, select them from various color and tone spots, some from dark, some from bright, and mid-tones as well. Choose your samples and when you are done, change viewing mode back to final output. And it looks much better than the one we created manually before by using the add grain effect. By the way, match grain effect has got the same settings as add grain effect, so if for some reason it doesn't match completely, and sometimes it doesn't, adjust settings manually on top. Or try to take new, better samples and see if that creates better results. Sometimes you'll have to composite an element from another film shot. A good example would be a green screen footage or rotoscoped element that was processed and now is ready to be composited with a new background. As it was filmed under the different conditions, it has its own individual noise characteristics. And therefore, in such situation, we'll have to reduce noise first from our element before we can introduce it to grain. Let me show you how to reduce noise inside the software. If it so happened that your composited element has got noise, which is not matching with the background, but instead has got its own individual characteristics, you have to remove it first before introducing a new grain on top in order to avoid a natural double grain effect. Let's go to our original file that we're compositing. In our case, it is a video file of a filmed still photo, which has got moving noise on it. Now, if it would be a still image with a static noise that is not moving, like here, you should still remove the noise from it. You will rarely receive this noisy footage from well-organized productions, but for learning purposes, let's see what we can do with it. To remove noise, apply an effect called Remove Grain. Just like with Add Grain and Mesh Grain effects, the preview box appears, which we can control and change appearance of. But let's change viewing mode to final output. You will notice it already smoothing out some noise, but it might not seem enough. Just like the match grain effect, remove grain also takes samples from our image automatically. So before playing with all available settings, let's set up our own manual samples first. Change viewing mode to noise samples and take control over them. Remove grain effect analyzes the pattern of the motion of the noise and then removes it from our element. So we have to carefully select the clear noise samples from different locations so it can be analyzed well. Just like we did with match grain effect before, avoid any motion or moving objects in the shot, as well as changes in brightness or colors. Choose various color and brightness tones as even as possible, as stable as possible, so that it can only learn from motion of the noise and nothing else. Choose your samples and when you're done, change viewing mode back to final output. 
and we have decent results which we can improve even further. So let me introduce you to other available settings. You can control the overall strength of noise reduction effect under the noise reduction settings. Let's enhance it a bit but not too much so that we don't lose a lot of sharpness in our shot. You can also reduce noise from each separate color channel under the channel noise reduction settings. So if you have more noise in one particular color than the other, it might be useful. To see what noise does each color channel has, click the symbol of the colorful balls and select one of the color channels, red, green or blue. Compare them, analyze their noise and then reduce it accordingly if need be. And once again, if you don't know about color channels and how they work, I advise you to go to my channel and play the beginning of the video called Everything You Need To Know About Alpha Channel. Let's come back. The passes level is the number of times this effect reviews and goes through the image to clean the noise. It is effective when noise is big and chunky and there's not a lot of motion in the shot. By increasing the number of passes you can reduce the noise of a bigger size. In our case let's try to increase it. Under the mode drop down menu you have two options, multi channel and single channel. Multi channel mode works by reducing noise from all color channels at once, while single channel mode reduces each color channel independently. It is a different process. Keep it at multi-channel most of the time, as it provides better results, unless you work with monochromatic images. Also keep in mind that either chosen mode will work differently with channel noise reduction settings, as they are directly connected. Let's move on further. Fine-tuning settings is where you make final touches. Chroma suppression level reduces color pixels that might be present in noise. Without it, we can see smudged color pixels like green and red, here and here. By default it is 1, and in our case it should stay that way, as it gets rid of the wanted color pixels as much as we need. If you have to, raise it even further to remove more color from pixels. Texture levels allow you to bring back details which we lost during the noise reduction process. To be more precise, it controls the amount of low-level noise when noise is bigger and more chunky. By raising it up, we bring more detail. Noise size bias adjustment allows us to reduce smaller sized noise by lowering it down and big sized noise by raising it up. And clean solid area adjusts the area of noise reduction effect around each pixel, which makes image look blurry. Most of the time fine-tuning settings will stay as default, but play around and see what works best in your situation. In our case, I will keep it as it is. Then let's talk about temporal filtering. It might be very useful sometimes, especially during very noisy footage like this. It analyzes noise between the frames and then reduces it by blending the current frame with the one before it and after, hence achieving much better results by smoothing out the rest of the noise. You can also adjust its strength through amount settings. However, even though temporal filtering reduces the noise a lot, it can still create additional unwanted artifacts of blurriness around the edges on the moving object in the shot. Therefore, it works best with static shots and with as less motion as possible. In our case, nothing is moving so we can keep it enabled, but if you do encounter such imperfections, play around with motion sensitivity levels to reduce it as much as possible. Otherwise, ignore the temporal filtering completely. Furthermore, it will not work at all on a static image where noise is also still and not moving, like it is in this example. As there are no frames to learn the noise motion from, it doesn't work. It is actually better to test temporal filtering from the beginning just after the manual sample selection and then if applicable move on with other settings on top. And finally let's move to unsharp mask settings. With this help we can restore some more sharpness which we lost during the noise reduction process. Let's bring back the sharpness by increasing the amount levels. If it creates the unwanted artifacts around the edges, try to raise the threshold. Radius allows to increase the area of search for detail for sharpening process. Overall be careful with these settings and don't overdo it as it might make it look very artificial. In our case, I will not touch it though. Play around with all available settings until you are satisfied. And now let's check our final results. It seems enough and we are ready to match grain with our background. Now there are a couple more situations when you would want to remove noise. That is before the green screen because that noise might create the unwanted artifacts around the edges. By the way, if you're interested to learn more about the green screen removal or rotoscoping, check my other free tutorials on Fireball VFX. You also would want to remove noise before you track your footage because that motion of the noise might fail your track. As well as before retouch, when you have to paint out the unwanted object from the shot. And we will talk about it in our next lesson. But now, it might be that you will end up with much more noise, which will seem hard to fix by using the local built-in effects inside the compositing software. In such case, you can use an advanced external third-party plugin, which will achieve much better results. The most popular one is known as Neat Video. It is very effective and simple to use and does most of the work for you. It also allows you to adjust settings manually if you wish. Let's apply it. Click Options to open an additional window with settings. You can simply click Auto Profile and it will select a noise sample for you. 
To check the results, either go to Noise Filter Settings and click Original, or simply Apply and see how it looks like inside your software. And if results are not satisfying, like it is in our case, let's choose the sample area on our own. If you can, take as big sample as possible. Sometimes, an expected sample area might provide best results. So play around and once you choose the one that you are happy with, click Auto Profile again. If you are in advanced mode, on the right you will see analysis of your noise sample area, which might be helpful in some cases. Now, let's see our current results. Looks very good. If you wish, you can also control manual settings that are located under the Noise Filter Settings tab and reduce noise even further. I will not go through them as it will require a separate tutorial, but you can go ahead and explore them on your own. Another plugin that is widely known is Denoiser by Red Giant. Now, it is less effective with very noisy footage than the Neat video is, but it is definitely better than the local built-in effect in a compositing software. It also has got a very simple and very effective manual settings. Now, even though Neat Video provides best results in our current situation, sometimes you might not have any clear area to take the sample from. And if our shot is not static and temporal filtering control in Remove Grain Effect forces blurriness onto moving objects, you might end up using the Denoiser instead, as it allows to reduce noise without any need for sample taking by only using the controls. Denoiser has got less controls, but they are effective. Reduce noise is the strength of the effect itself, smooth colors, gets rid of the color pixels, and smooths the transition between them, and preserve detail and sharpen speak for themselves. Results are not of the best with such extreme noisy footage. We can remove noise even further, but at the price of smudgeness, which sometimes can still be acceptable though. The noisy results are still better than local build-in remove grain effect, which if raised further starts to lose too much details and becomes artificial and blurry. Now, in our particular situation, Neat Video creates best results, then Denoiser and Remove Grain as last. However, I will be careful comparing these plugins, as each shot is different, as well as each situation is different, therefore each approach is different. Moreover, you will probably rarely work with such noisy files like this, in which case a built-in Remove Grain effect is more than enough. Neat Video and Denoiser are more useful with extra dirty files, like in our example. You can also find more third-party plugins on the market and test them out, but the best solution is to avoid noise during the production whatsoever, as any noise reduction in post will only take the details away. By the way, Red Giant also has got a plugin which allows to add grain as well. It is called Renoiser. You can control the amount, size and texture, as well as sharpen the grain. Log grain, I guess, is intended for when working in low color space, and monochrome grain gets rid of colors in pixels. You can also control grain on each color channel separately, but it only works when monochrome grain option is not being checked, and tonal range allows to control grain either in highlights, midtones, or shadows. Renoiser also has got ready-to-use presets, which you can find under the grain preset drop-down menu. I believe local built-in add grain effect is more than enough, but Renoiser might seem comfortable having less but effective settings. If you want to learn more about these plugins and test them out for yourself, you can find the links in the description down below under this video. And that's how you add, match or reduce grain. As always, thank you, especially to my patrons, or should I rather say, my first patron ever, under the name Says the Man Behind the Mask. I really appreciate your support, man. If you would like to support my lessons, you can do that either through PayPal or Patreon. There will be links in the description down below for you to do that. Also, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell not to miss any of my tutorials in the future. And that will be all. Thank you as always and see you in the next lesson.